How are we doing guys? Moose here, Season 2, Episode 26 of our West Ham United Career Mode as we host Inter Milan in the second leg of our Europa League tie at Upton Park. Looking to use the home crowd to our advantage and overcome that 1-0 lead that they built up on us. So obviously we have our full full squad coming out here to take on Inter Milan here. The best line we can trot out at this moment in time to come against their tough 3-5-1-1. Obviously they'll have Icardi and Belfadil looking to uh, get that crucial away goal for them. But I have some faith that the team, the boys can come out and create some chances here early on here. Trippier, nice little bit of skill here. Nice little ball roll. Gets inside his defender. Plays it a little bit too long for Matt Charles, but he's able to nod it down to Lacazette. Turns, has a shot, but it's a little bit wanting and unable to score. But Inter Milan come back the other way in the counterattack. Ball player with the top to Icardi on the edge of the box. And he smashes it off the underside of the bar where it's cleared away by James Tompkins. And finally Luke Shaw is able to hoof it out of the way to keep us alive. That would have been a terrible way to start the game off. But a nice little bit of passing play here. Lacazette eventually finds Andy Carroll out wide. He gets around his defender. Whips into the box for Lacazette. His shot is on target. But Handanovic with a fantastic save. And then Grenier's header is well off the mark. So Inter just holding us off the scoreboard here. Ravel Morrison does well. Turns defender Kaya. And it's another good save by Handanovic. So a couple really good chances. A second chance here as we come forward in Extra time in the first half. Stoppage time. Luke Shaw gets the ball from Matt Jarvis. A little bit fortunate to be able to stay on it. But Jarvis then sees Michael Bradley here in a little bit of space. He does well with a nice little 360 turn on the ball. Has a shot across the face of the keeper. And he hits the post. How many times has Michael Bradley hit the post in this series? I can't keep counting, to be honest. He's hit the post at least four or five times. Uh, on plays that he could have scored that would have been absolutely huge for us. As Adrian makes a huge save to keep us in the game. Ball in looking for Lacazette as we still need that equalizer here. It's play out to Clement Grenier. He tries to hit it from range, but it's blocked by Kovacic. Grenier then with a little bit of room here, just looking for some space. Turns back inside, plays it to Joshua Guy, who turns his defender, gets in. And another save by Handanovic, who's been fantastic. Then a terrible turnover by Grenier himself. Ball played in here, knocked around a bit by Inter. It eventually finds its way to Kuzmanovic, and he smashes it into the back of the net, and that could do it for us. We're going to need three goals now to be able to get back into us. We're 2-0 down on aggregate, but they do have that crucial away goal. Three goals in a little under 10 minutes is a bit wanting, and it gets even worse here. Guarin turns inside, plays the ball. Jonathan lays it back to Ishak Belfadil, and his second goal in the tie. Ninth goal that actually leaves the Europa League here in the 85th minute. Puts it well and truly out of reach. We're going to need four goals. Lacazette, though, plays out wide to Joshua Gat on the left wing. Turns inside of Ranakia, trying to create some space for himself. Gets the space, has a shot, and it's parried away by the keeper yet again. I sound like a broken record. He's making a ton of saves here, but Trippier able to latch onto the rebound. Plays it back into Gat, who finds himself all alone near the penalty spot, and he hammers it into the back of the goal. So a consolation goal for us from the Gat man. He does pick up the ball, trying to get it back there. Um, but it's a bit of a consolation. It's a really nice ball from Trippier. Gat just gets some space, and it's a simple finish. Really nice goal from him, but that would be all she wrote, and it's a 3-1 inter-aggregate victory, 2-1 on the game. Really disappointing, but a great cup run. I know the board wants us to win the cup, but look at that. We certainly deserved a better fate. We dominated the first leg. In this leg, 57% possession, 7 shots on target to their 3, and certainly deserved a better fate than a 2-1 loss here today. Um, so really, really tough way to go out. But that said, I'm certainly happy with the boys and the effort they put in. Also going through our Sporting, PSG, and AC Milan. So it could see an Inter Milan, AC Milan semifinal or final, which would be absolutely nuts. So uh, definitely some good fixtures going on in the Europa League. We get 500k um, as a result, which we could then put to good use, uh, bringing in either a five-star scout or using it for uh, Jonathan Dos Santos' transfer fee. Like I said, I want I have him on a five million uh, pound future transfer fee at the end of this season. Uh, so we'll probably use some of the budget to bring him in uh, as replacement for Diame, who is leaving to go. Uh, he might actually be on to Southampton, who we do play in this next uh, game, as we currently sit a point ahead of Liverpool for the fourth and final Champions League spot. But we do have a game in hand, so this game. Uh, it's huge for us. Anything we can take from it would be great because we're actually playing kind of a, our second-rate side since that inter-game inter was only two or three days prior. 
So we're playing uh, a ton of reserves. Obviously, some great players. Gat, Sidney Sam still starting. Danny Ings up front. Uh, but that said, uh, we are playing a bit of a reserve side here just because uh, it's really what we have to do. We also have a game with Norwich in three days' time as well. But right off of kickoff, Danny Ings here linking up with Joshua Gat. It's a beautiful through ball of Dos Santos. Turns back inside, lays it to Gat right at the keeper. And Sidney Sam just smashes the rebound through the center of the area. Really a chance we could have capitalized on and scored. But a great ball then from Sydney Sam to Joshua Gat. Just open up into space. Smashes it to the near post. And the Gat man strikes again. What a beautiful goal there from Joshua Gat. Just smashed it. Completely surprised the keeper, I think, by going to the near post. Uh, and he's now picked up eight goals for us uh, in his time since coming over to Molda. And you'll remember he missed the first couple weeks here. Um with a, I think it was a broken ankle, so fantastic for him. Danny Ings then played through with a beautiful ball from Dos Santos, I believe it was, but he just, he hasn't scored a ton, he's lacking that striker's vital uh, killer instinct, so he lays it off to Gat, the goal scorer, ends up uh, with a save by the keeper and a couple of resulting corners here. The first one eventually cleared away, the second one then into Diami, and it's a huge save by John Ruddy, the former Norwich keeper, uh, the England man now at Southampton. But this is what you get when you play a backup keeper. Henderson, what is he doing there? I called him out to just pick up the ball. He eventually kicks it away, flounders that, and it gives Southampton a chance. They then get a free kick a little bit later that Jay Rodriguez makes. Uh, it's a good save from Henderson that time, we will say, uh, but still a little bit displaying. Then the 45th minute, punch him with a free kick. It's a really creative play, just chipping it over the goalkeeper. And this is when FIFA disappoints me. A play like this, when the ball comes in, Kieran Trippier, I'm smashing uh, the clearance button three or four times, but FIFA, as it's wont to do, sometimes when the ball falls to your feet, it makes you hold on to the ball for some reason. I don't know why. And in that situation, Trippier holds on to the ball, holds on to the ball, eventually Klein steals it off him and puts it in the back of the net. Just really disappointing to give up a goal uh, in that sort of fashion. But you will have that, you know, it, sometimes it doesn't even happen in real life, things like that. Just a, a fluky bounce. But look at that for a ball from Joey O'Brien. Danny Ying. Oh, it's beautiful. He has learned his triple C. He is cool, calm, and collected. And it's a beautiful finish from Danny Ings here. Look at the ball from Joey O'Brien, though. Absolutely sensational. He played it out from literally his own uh, corner flag. Finds Danny Eggs streaking completely behind the defense, completely in stride. And it's an absolutely beautiful finish uh, from the Englishman, the former Burnley man. It's just absolutely beautiful to give us a vital 2-1 lead. But Southampton then provided some pressure. They, like uh, Aston Villa, but to a much more successful rate, played that ball over the top. Plenty of times, and Schneiderlin able to capitalize past the on-rushing Henderson to give Southampton the 2-2 tie. So we're certainly looking at a point at least will be happy for us, but Southampton, can they steal it away? Ball played back to Victor Wanyama, but his shot is just a little bit weak, and it's an easy save for Henderson. Tompkins then plays substitute Kevin Nolan through on the left-hand side, creates some space, plays it into Ings, settles it down, hits a shot off the bar, but Ruddy with an absolute howler. Should have been an own goal. The game gives it to Ings, which he'll certainly claim. It was a great play by Danny Ings to settle this and take the shot, but it's off the hands of Ruddy and into the back of the net. We will certainly take that as it looks like we may have stolen the three points, but Southampton not going to let us go quietly into the night. They have a great chance here. It's cleared away by Trippier after a wonderful save by Henderson. Osvaldo then trying to create some space as we can't clear it away. And Henderson looks to have made a howler of his own as Yoshida puts it in the back of the net. But if you take a look here, James Collins trying to make a block. And it just takes the slightest of deflections around our reserve goalkeeper. And 3-3 would be how the game finished. So with the side we were putting out there compared to our, our top class side, we'll certainly take the point to keep us in fourth place. But that said, you know, this felt like a loss, to be honest, when I played this game. It absolutely felt like a loss. After losing to Inter and getting knocked out of the Europa League, you wanted to come in just absolutely smash Inter, or uh, smash Southampton, I should say. And we were able to keep taking the lead, keep taking the lead, and they just fought back, fought back, and well played to them. But 
really wanted the win. So we do host Norwich City at home now at Upton Park. Obviously great to come back to the home fans after uh, a tough away draw at Southampton. And a team Norwich that we should be just absolutely demolishing. We beat them 6-1 to one, uh, the last time we played them away at Carrow Road. And we're trotting out our full team here. Guy DeMel, I think the only change because Trippier was tired, you know, sort of from our full team that we normally put out. So fantastic for us. Hopefully we can take advantage of a Norwich team that I think is sitting either in the relegation places or in 16th or 17th. So we start off really early here. Ravel Morrison, and it's a perfect start for us. It's a great job to stop the ball and play across in. And Grenier just guides it into the bottom corner. It's a beautiful finish from the Frenchman for his eighth goal of the season and he's really been a revelation the last couple months since we switched that diamond formation so if you do pick up Clement Grenier yourself try him out in the diamond because he's absolutely been stellar there we get another chance here's Jarvis just bombing up the wing so much space plays it into Andy Carroll similar to that Lacazette chance they went wasteful against Inter Milan as he blasts it over the bar but we get a corner here in the 25th minute and this is an absolute bullet maybe the fastest header I've seen all season as Andy Carroll picks up his 20th league goal that now leads the league by himself as Wayne Rooney actually has 19 goals in the league. I checked the stats um, earlier before playing this game and Wayne Rooney is caught up with 19 goals but we try to be a little creative here off the corner. Grenier just plays it back outside the area to Ravon Morrison who hits it audaciously on the volley but it is a chance that goes wanting really close to going in though as Morrison uses skills nice little roulette and plays the one two at Guy DeMel uses strength to get through Nathan Redmond plays the ball into Andy Carroll his header is then well saved by the Norwich goalkeeper to keep things at 2-0 Norwich then finally with a chance but Adrian does really well with a diving save, two strong hands at his near post. And then Carroll, ranging forward, looks to Clement Grenier. He just lays it off to Ravel Morrison on the right-hand side. And those two have just been stellar today. Morrison and Grenier in on nearly every highlight. And Ravel Morrison finishes it to clinch the three points for us with a half hour to go. A 3-0 lead now. It's going to be nearly insurmountable for North City. That's a perfect finish off the inside of the left post. Really nice. Norwich, though, trying to get something back. Jan Matt plays the ball on two uh, Bradley Johnson, and he does finish it off in the 85th minute, but that's all Norwich would get, 3-1 to West Ham, and a huge three points to keep us pushing towards that Champions League place that we so greatly desire uh, heading into Season 3 of uh, this West Ham career mode. Fantastic, well-deserved victory for us. It was a little bit touch-and-go on the defensive side, um, playing guys like DeMille um, and Collins in there. We also get note that Andy Carroll is going to be out for three weeks. He did sprain his ankle on a challenge uh, late in the game, about the 75th minute, and I subbed him off for Whitehead. Lacazette bruised his shoulder, but he was able to stay on. Uh, so we'll see how we deal with those striker injuries moving forward. But the return of Hammers headlines to close out this episode. The Hammers faithful salute West Ham. Europa League run. After bowing out of the Europa League to Italian power Inter Milan with an aggregate loss of 3-1, the home support showered the Hammers with affection for such a strong showing in their first return to European football since 2006 when they were knocked out of the Europa League qualifying stages by another Italian outfit, Palermo. They can now return their focus to attempting to hang on to their potential qualification to the UEFA Champions League, which would be a huge step forward for us as a club. And then, Moose expecting more defensive effort and clean sheets. With disappointing defensive displays away at Southampton and uneven showings against Crystal Palace and North City, Moose has demanded more of his back line, commanded by his stand-in skipper, Winston Reid. We can't expect to score three or more goals in every game, and it's really down to the players to get their organization right and put on stronger displays, the manager said. Expect the Hammers to come out strong after this slight break now against Swansea City. And that's it for this episode, guys. I hope you've really enjoyed it. Uh, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for future videos, uh, and we'll see you in episode 27, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.